So I want to start my session by being thankful. Uh, thankful for having this event in person and seeing everyone here. Um, and also want to thank Tuloka for arranging this event and for Meta for hosting us. This is totally not obvious uh, for us. And I also for people back home, so don't think that we forgot about you. Uh, the DAGZAP team got your back. So it's going to be also interactive for you. Um, so every time that you're going to see the office GIF on the slides, just raise your hand and Dean uh, backstage is going to see it, and he's going to draw three amazing uh, full packages of our swag, and we're going to ship it directly to your home. So stay tuned. Even uh, if it's abroad? Huh? Even if it's abroad? Uh, all over the world. Okay. We're reaching everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. So um, our session today is going to deal with notebook to production. And what do we even mean by that? So. We're going to learn how we can reduce the iteration time between the initial prototyping uh, using notebooks to deploying our model to production. And we're going to use various MLOps tools and techniques to do so. I'm Nir Barazida. I'm a data scientist at Dagzub. And I think the best one-liner to describe what Dagzub is doing is basically building the GitHub for machine learning. So we all love GitHub, and you think it's great. But what we're doing, we're basically integrating powerful open source tools into the platform and adding a unique Git flow layer on top of it to enable you to collaborate together more efficiently. I'm an engineer at heart, and I love building things from scratch and optimizing workflows. I graduated with honor from the Ben Gurion Structural Engineering Faculty, majored in structural analysis. And pretty quick, I understand that data analysis is more of my thing. So I started my career at Volti, building machine learning algorithms to try to hack the way that banks are calculating our mortgage rate. So if you're planning to buy a house, ping me. And about a year and a half ago, I joined this rocket ship, Dagzub, which is on the verge of leaving planet Earth straight to the moon. I'm currently pursuing my master's in data science and machine learning from the Reichmann University and researching about MLOps uh, practices and workflows at my job at Dagzub. And so far, the hypothesis that provided the highest statistical significant, say it 10 times, the highest statistical significant, uh, which is the best way to get the attention of data scientists, is using three words, notebook, production, and MLOps. And today, today we're going to have them all. Now, it's clicked. Today, we're going to have them all. So, Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter, yeah, I think it's, let's do that. Yeah, thank you. So Jupyter Notebooks, awesome. Born out of the IPython back in 2014, Project Jupyter has rapidly grown in popularity among data scientists to become the de facto standard tool for exploratory analysis. And to give you the sense of its impact, Jupyter was awarded the 2017 ACM Software System Award. It's a prestige honor that they share with Java, Unix, and the web. Not Web3, but just the web. However, if you're going to explore some of the MLOps communities, you might get the impression that notebooks are all that is evil in the world. And they might have a point. I need to click stronger. Oh, Meta, you're, you're flexing. So with notebooks, we can run out of order uh, code and edit cells after the, we already have uh, run them. And this is a huge disadvantage for reproducibility and make us put a lot of effort to track the kernel state when executing our experiment. Also, behind the scenes, uh, Jupyter Notebooks are basically a very large JSON file that uh, can't be easily diffed by Git, which makes it very hard to review. And last, our code that is we're hosting on our notebooks can't be called outside of the notebook, which makes it very hard to test and reuse. So why do we even use them? We can just throw them out the window window and go back to the good old-fashioned IDE. Well, notebooks are a great tool, after all, that give us superhuman abilities. They give us an interactive way to work with our code. They have built-in visualization, and we can see the results right after running our code. And all of this means that they are really great for quick prototyping. And now that we agree that notebooks are really great, 
how can we make our use of them more efficient and reduce the drawbacks that they have? So at DAGZUB, we conducted a user research interviewing hundreds of data scientists, MLOps engineers, VP and CTOs, Quark included, and found that when using Jupyter Notebooks and following six simple principles, you can dramatically improve your productivity, your scalability, and reproducibility. And how can we do that? So we want to host our codes in modules, version basically everything, so not only our code files. We want to have peer review on our notebook, something that most of us usually don't do. Track experiments and save them into a database. Use task-oriented notebooks and track our environment settings. So how does it really look in practice? Let's take a common scenario and examine it. And in our use case, your team lead just got off the phone with the CEO, and there's a new project in the funnel, Save the Planet. Surprisingly, the CEO wants it in production by the end of the week. It's a freaking game changer. So you roll up your sleeves, you put on your headset, you find the perfect gem for the task, and you open your desktop, and you go get some coffee. No, I'm kidding. You're probably going to download your data set to your local machine, open a new notebook, and start exploring it. But Hold your horses, horses, cowboys. This is not your first rodeo. You already created a one-of-a-kind, never-heard-of data analysis plots. But where are they? So you start firing up notebooks, strolling through dozens of sales and outputs, looking for, the hundred, uh, looking for the one function that fits your need. But although witnessing the outstanding work we did a few months back, it's highly time-consuming. And we want an easy way to search for old code, old code and reuse it. And this, mean, and this, among other things, is a very good reason to move our code to modules. So after getting our initial piece of code to do what it was designed to do, we refactor it into Python functions that doesn't rely on any global variable and takes everything as argument. And this will unlock a world of opportunities for us. First of all, we can run unit tests, because now we can call our code outside of the notebook. Secondly, we're going to stay dry. And in Israel, it's very easy, but apparently when writing code is not. So now we, can't, we don't repeat ourselves when we're opening a new project. And last, we can use static code analysis tools to flag programming errors and bugs. And this is amazing. So now we can move faster without breaking anything. Uh, sorry for saying it at Meta, but you can move fast without breaking anything. Um, and we can start exploring our data. But what should we do when reaching a good result or, better yet, a dead end? Should we just copy the cells to the bottom of the notebook to make sure that we don't lose them? Or maybe we should just copy our notebook, give it a unique name, and Stone Age version it. Well, <coughs> only if there was a magical tool that will enable us version control with the power of going back in time. Oh, wait, we have Git. So, Versioning our notebook with Git should be as intuitive as versioning our code files. And when using Git, we're once again unlocking a world of opportunities. We can hypothesize in the isolated environment, recover previous work, use standard CI CD tools, and the list just goes on and on. But wait, are we developing software project or a data science project? Remember, we have along to our code also data, models, and pipelines. And in most, in most cases, versioning uh, the version of our non-code components is the focal point of the experiment. And therefore, we should be able to go back in time and retrieve previous versions of our data and pipelines. And in recent years, many tools emerged uh, for data and pipeline versioning, oriented for different tasks and use cases. And I think it's very important that you know that you should research for which tool fits best your needs. It depends on the data set that you have, your workflow, etc. By the way, Dean has a great talk about choosing MLOps tools from first principles, so highly recommend using, uh, seeing it. And when we're going to version our data, we will have a des designated tool to track and version our data, and we will avoid ad hoc versioning, so no version 1 of our data, version 2, give it dates, etc. We'll also be able to, uh, to share our data between team members in a standard way and not sharing it over Slack or an S3 bucket. And most importantly, we'll be able to reproduce our results with a click of a button. And let's see if it works. Yeah, it clicks. 
We broke down, explored, and tested our data to create the Mona Lisa of reports. Really, it's a thing of beauty. But now we're feeling comfortable enough to start processing it, right? But what if we missed something? What if there is a hidden bias in our hypothesis or in our work? Or if our, our hypothesis isn't supported by our, the data? Our work should be passed under the magnifying glass of our colleagues. An important step that sometimes is overlooked when using Jupyter Notebooks, because it's not intuitive. So we'd like to use reviewing tools to enable the cell and output diff, and also communicate over the cells with context. At Dagzab, we're using NBDIME under the hood to compare notebooks, and we develop our own mechanism to comment on cells. And for GitHub, for example, there's review NB, and there's tons of tools and plugins out there. Just find the one that also fits your need and use it. And by doing that, it will help us reduce our bias in our work and help us find bugs. And when reaching to production, we're going to be bug free, hopefully. So we're three days into the project and haven't run a single cell that contains fit. We want to train a model, and we want it now. But just before we do that, keep in mind that we're conducting a research. This is not a software development project, once again. Experimenting without logging our experiment, our parameters, our results, is meaningless. So we need to keep track of everything we do. And like in large file versioning, many tools emerged in recent years for experiment tracking. And in this case, I believe, I personally believe, that it doesn't really matter with which hammer you choose to hit the nail, as long as you punch it through. And by using this hammer, we will build our knowledge base as we go. We'll be able to reproduce our results of the experiment to some extent. And we, once again, we're going to avoid ad hoc recording by using spreadsheets or whatnot. So the deadline is closing in, and you find yourself going back and forth between processing and modeling. We're, you're tweaking your uh, function and seeing how it affects the model. And you start feeling the heat from your boss to the point where she decides to add two new team members to the task. Now what? What are we going to do? We're going to all work on a giant notebook together? OK, so Dean, you're going to take cells 1 to 30. And in bar, you're going to take cells 30 to 40. And I'm going to take 50 and above. But hold on, in bar, don't run cell 14, because it takes forever to run. Let's skip the output. Well, this is not the proper way to collaborate together, we can all uh, agree on. This is why we want a designated notebook pair task from the get-go. We want to use the same notebook. And by doing that, we will be able to scale up and down by increasing the woman or man power on the task. We will make our notebook easier to review and maintain. And we will have a clear structure to our project. And this is important for onboarding, which will help new team members go uh, 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 and join the task that we're working on. OK, so we're six hours before the deadline, and we have one last training we need to run. But the person in charge of modeling called in sick. Oh my god, I just wish this week to be over. So you connect to your favorite cloud provider, no such thing, and you fire a monster machine, pull the latest version of the notebook, and run all cells. We got this. Oh, wait, what's going on? Error retrieving driver version. Oh, come on. Now, we didn't use the proper uh, kernel for, or the proper TensorFlow version that supports the driver that we're using. So this is why our notebooks need to be reproducible. Anyone on the team should be able to take your notebook, rerun it with the same input, and get the same output. And this is why we want to keep track of our uh, environment setup. And in other words, it means requirement.txt. But I will take it another step and say that we should containerize our notebook when we work on them in a way that will prevent us or ensure that we're working on an isolated environment that don't require any OS level dependencies. And by doing that, it will enable us reproducibility by anyone on the team. We'll be able to pick up the project from where the other team member left it. And the end of 2D machine, uh, the MLOps or the ML engineer team to put it in production will be much more easier and complete. So we reach to the end. And now that we know that we need to host our code in modules, version everything, so not only our code files, because we remember that we have also data, pipelines, and experiments, we want to have a peer review, because this is something that is important and we usually neglect when using Jupyter Notebooks. 
We want to track our experiments. We want to use task-oriented notebooks, so we won't have this gigantic notebook that we can't collaborate on. And we want to track environment setups. So you can incorporate those six pretty easy principles to your workflow starting today. And it will help you uh, move faster to production without bre breaking anything on the way and make sure that you don't have buggy code, long processing, and you can able to scale your work on the project. I want to thank you all for joining me today uh, and helping me save the planet. It was a hard task, but uh, we're in the process of doing that. Uh, feel free to follow, connect, DM, whatever. Uh, more than I would like to connect, I would love to learn about your use case and your workflow and the tool that you're using. So any platform will be uh, awesome. And yeah, this we generated with Dali. This is crazy. Um, and uh, thank you all for joining and have a safe drive. <laughs>